Until the mid 20th century, Jews throughout the world remained an incredibly insular group. Intermarriage averaged just one half of one percent. And that very insularity has made Jews the perfect specimens for genetic research. And so Jews have been um, the focus of many studies. But that begs the question, what is a Jew? Are Jews genetically pure? Or are Jews converts from other faiths? Author John Entine investigated that very question in his book, Abraham's Children, Race, Identity, and the DNA of the Chosen People. Many Jews uh, for a long time had been told, um, based on books like Arthur Kessler's The Thirteenth Tribe, that Jews, uh, Ashkenazi Jews, are really converts. That uh, almost all Ashkenazi Jews were once part of a uh, uh, empire in uh, what is now Russia called the Khazarian Empire that existed between the 7th and the 10th century. But as genetic science has developed since Mr. Kessler wrote his book, the evidence points the other way, suggesting that Jews are Jews by DNA. On the male line, about 75 to 80 percent of males uh, do have Middle Eastern ancestry. On the female side, 50 percent of females uh, do not have Middle Eastern ancestry, 50 percent. Why do we find such a marked difference between male and female lines? It looks like many um, Jewish males from Rome, from different parts of the world, came uh, to settle in, um, in areas that were either pagan or Christian. They took on local wives. But it gets even more interesting. You, or someone you know, may claim to be a Kohen, or Jewish priest by oral tradition. Jews who claim this distinction believe that they are direct descendants of Aaron, Moses' brother, who lived about three millennia ago. Well, if that's the case, then presumably geneticists could trace Aaron's male chromosome through male Kohanim because, but for distinct mutations or markers, the male chromosome does not change through the generations. So what did the scientists find? They found out that there was a set of um, six markers that trace back 3,300 years, give or take um, a few hundred years. They were flabbergasted. Here for the first time you had DNA reaffirming Jewish tradition. DNA was found in 70 to 80 percent of people who 3,300 years later claim that they are of Cohen uh, ancestry. And the research on the Kohanim produced even more staggering results. In southern Africa, a tribe of black Africans known as the Lemba claimed to be Jewish. So scientists decided to test this assertion through DNA analysis and focused on the Lemba's priests or Buba. More than 50% of the priests carried markers that, tra that were the exact same markers that were found in Ashkenazi, Sephardic, and Mizrahi priests and also traced back to the time of Aaron. Um, absolutely remarkable. So the genetic evidence strongly suggests that Jews can trace their common heritage through their DNA. But that research also shows that Jews have developed a series of genetic mutations that have led to devastating diseases. Here's just some of the Jewish diseases, Bloom syndrome, Canavan disease, uh, Gaucher's, breast and ovarian cancer, cystic fibrosis. All told, genetic Jews, especially Ashkenazi Jews as a group, are predisposed to about 40 different diseases. But why? Well, it's the result of what is known as the bottleneck effect. Into the 1400s, Ashkenazi Jewry probably did not number more than 15 to 25,000 people. Because it grew out of such a tiny population and grew so quickly, it also retained a kind of genetic uh, insularity. So that insular genetic pool, carrying markers for 40 some odd diseases, spread from the founder population of 20,000 to today's 8 million Ashkenazi Jews who represent 80% of world Jewry. And now geneticists posit a theory as to why these deadly diseases have not died off as a result of simple evolutionary science. 
A team of American scientists is proposing that certain genetic disorders arose in Ashkenazi Jews because the same genes carried increased intelligence. In other words, if an individual inherits both defective genes, they will suffer from the disease. But these scientists believe that if an individual carries just one copy of the recessive gene, that gene leads to increased dendrite production in the brain, resulting in higher IQs. While it may not be PC to suggest that Jews are smarter genetically, consider these statistics. The average IQ in the world is around 100 or so. The average uh, Jewish IQ is between 107 and 117 on tests that have been done over a period of 70 years. And if you isolate verbal IQ, Jews score 123 on average. Controversial data, no doubt. So after the lecture, I spoke with some members of the audience and I asked them about John Antine's central thesis. Do they buy that Jews share common ancestors and therefore share common characteristics? I absolutely do share um, his his premise. I think I was brought up with that feeling that there was some there was some advantage to my Jewish heritage, but then there were also so many things both physical and cultural, that came along with that, which were very, very uh, sad things. There's such social taboos in our society for discussing any of those kinds of things, and yet it's something that all of us have a sense about, that there are different populations of people who may have different strengths, perhaps in athletics, perhaps in intelligence. Do you want to learn more about the genetic journey of the Jewish people? Well, you can read more about it in John Entine's book, Abraham's Children, Race, Identity, and the DNA of the Chosen People. For JLTV News, I'm Brad Pomerantz.